belly up is also his preferred masturbation position. Adam Corolla! Thank you, guys. Always great to be here, back, belly up, Bob. Uh, all right. Uh, let's talk about this whole Epstein thing for a minute, and then we can, <laughs> we can just move on after that. But I feel it's an elephant. It's in the room. It needs to be addressed. So I'm just the man for that. Um, I, I realize the problem with pedophiles is I'm never quite sure. You know what I mean? Like when... You know, you watch the news and they're like, oh, the gangbanger punched the Asian chick on the subway, and then they show a picture of the guy. You go, yeah, of course, that's the guy. Yeah, he would do that for sure. But pedophiles are weird. You know, I can't figure it out. You know, they go, Tom Hanks was on that plane. And you go, Tom Hanks, come on. And then you go, Tom Hanks, yeah. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, come on, come on, that guy. And I was thinking about it. And I think you could all probably do this with somebody in your life. Like, and this is the problem with pedophiles. I was thinking about my, one of the problems, <laughs> one of the few problems with pedophiles, I was thinking about it through the, the lens of my stepdad. I got a stepdad, he's not a pedophile. <laughs> or if he is, he should have made his move years ago. Like, <laughs> The window is closed on diddling me. But uh, no, his stepdad's a good dude. He's a quiet guy, you know. He's a little bit socially awkward, but he's a good man. And he would never do anything like this. I don't think this is the problem, you know. So you just look, look at this way. You go, my, my stepdad, you know, John. Would John ever kill somebody? And then I would go, no, he's a good man. He's not capable. He's not put his hands on anybody. And you go, would John, what if, what if we accuse him of arson? We accuse your stepdad of arson. Would he do that? I'd go, no, he, no, he wouldn't do that. Of course he wouldn't. How about assault and battery? I'd go, no, no, John would never do that. How about fucking a 16-year-old model on an island? I'd be like, Hold on, which island are we talking about? <laughs> this is the problem, people. Just for the record, I don't think John would do that. But, um, <laughs> but I'm saying I can't say for certain, and that's, that's the problem with pedophilia. I, uh, I'm not here to give uh, tips to pedophiles, but I do have one. I do have one. Um, it's from watching that show Catch a Predator, you know? And, you know, I'm a problem solver, you know? So when I watch that show, I think of angles, you know? And it's always the same story, right? The guy's a long haul trucker, he lives in Modesto, he's driving to Fresno, he met his new gal pal, he's swinging by her house, or at least her parents' house, it's not her house, right? He's going by the place, he's gonna hook up with his, with his young princess he met online. And again, I'm not here to give tips to these monsters, but here goes. <laughs> I would simply waze it to my new lady friend's house. And then when I got 20 minutes out of her house, 20 minutes away, I would just order a medium Domino's cheese pizza to be delivered. And then I would just park out front of the house. And when the pizza arrived, when the door opened, if I saw a boom mic come out of the door, I would just keep driving. And it would be the best $9 I've ever spent in my life. And what's the worst case scenario? You and your new girlfriend enjoy some pizza? Kids love pizza. All right, now a tip on how to weed out the pedophiles, because I, I, think, I think it's only fair. I gave a tip 
was sort of pro-pedophile. Now I have an anti. Here's how to figure it out. Here would be my, my, my policy. My policy, if I was doing anything, like I was around like Cub Scouts, you know, I was into scouting, you know. By the way, they're asking for it because those, those outfits are adorable. You know what I mean? I, I feel like I'd like to get with one of those kids with the little kerchief and the... I mean, you're, you're making a pretty attractive target. That's all I'm saying. I'm not going to make a move, but, you know, a couple of beers and the kid comes up with the shorts and, hey, you know. <laughs> He's got merit badges. He could tie a sheep shank. I'm impressed, you know. We get to talking. I'm just saying. Now, my policy, if I was in scouting, is I would get all the scouts in the room, I'd get all the dads in the room, and I'd be like, all right, somebody's got to take these kids up to Mount Pinos for three days and camp with these kids alone up in Mount Pinos. Now, who's going to take these kids? First hand that went up, I'd be like, Steve, you're out. Why am I out? Your hand started to go up before I even finished asking the question, Steve. You're out. Tim, you're taking the kids up to Mount Pinos. Oh, you've got to be shitting me. The Lions haven't made the playoffs in 26 years. They're playing Sunday. Come on. I'd be like, that's why you're taking the kids. <laughs> All right. We got um, Greg Fitzsimmons back there, great stand-up comedian, and uh, skinny Jody Miller. Back there as well. I think we should uh, bring them out and uh, begin the mirth. Greg and uh, Skinny Jody Miller, are you guys back there? You ready to uh, hit the stage? They're coming? All right. I told them backstage. I'll probably do about eight minutes. And here they are. All right, so uh, Jody, I know you got a special coming out I do. soon. I do, and we can look forward to that. Where, yeah. Where will we find that when uh, it does come out? I don't know. Out? I don't know. It could be here. We could be just showing it here. Uh, <laughs> no, it's called Decades in the Making. It'll be out in the spring, and uh, if you follow Adam, I'm sure he'll be promoting it. For I me. shall. I went there when you taped it <laughs> you at did? the Ice House. It was uh, it was it was magnificent. I was swept away. You was swept away. Literally. And uh, Wait, you performed at the Ice House. I did. That's why I shot my special. You're Mexican. Yes. Oh, it's an inside joke. <laughs> Every comic there is Mexican. <laughs> Good night. Thanks for having <laughs> me <laughs> out, everybody. Okay. He's not in my Jesus special. Christ. He's not in my special. <laughs> uh, and uh, Greg, you'll be traveling around insulting Mexicans. Where? Well, Guatemalans, El Salvador. I mean, oh, I don't discriminate. Do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You speak Spanish, you're going under the going fucking down. car. No, listen, when you're, when you're racist, yeah. you're either black, Asian, white, or Mexican. There yeah. is no separation of <laughs> right, Guatemala right, right. and Honduran. You know, yes. you're, all, you're all Mexican. And there's not just white. There's, there's Irish, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. and then there's white. Yeah. I'm yeah. Irish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Super white. Yeah, the Is that whitest. the whitest of the whites? So white. Yeah, it's like uh, putting, putting me on the beach is like putting a fork in the microwave. Just yeah. oh, spark. He's literally getting a sunburn right yes. now. Look at yeah, his if face you could lower these. Red. Yeah, anybody have sunblock? <laughs> Did you, uh, is that, would you like a little more melanin? A little. Yeah, not too much. Not no, too no, much. Let's overdo no, it. Just yeah. a little bit. <laughs> No, I, I get it, but a, but a little. I think I think yeah. we've all, I think the I think we figured out that too white is too white, too white. right? Yeah, it's too white. And then there's we don't want to go full Yafit Koda, you know, or whatever her name is. Who's the? <laughs> Who's that? Yafit. Wait, what's his name? Co Yafit. Is it in the Hobbit? Hobbit? We're gonna look up. No, he's the guy. He's the black man who oh, would always play like the police chief. Is it Yafit Koda? Who am I coming up with his name? Dawson. Who are you? Dawson will, will, will tell me. No, uh, he was in Midnight Run. He's the guy who's so black his eyes start to change colors. <laughs> like you know, like, that, that, like you're yeah. so black, you're, I can tell by just looking just at your eyes. eyes. Right. Yeah, he played like Edie Amin in a movie. Uh, That's okay. how. All right, Yafit Koto. 
Yafit Kota. Right. Oh, if you saw this actor, you'd go, oh, yeah, the blackest yeah. actor. Yeah. All right, now here's what I'm saying. <laughs> You don't want to go translucent, Fitz dog white. No, it's yeah. so white. You don't want to go Edie Amin, you know, that dark. Yeah. You want, you want a kind of a mocha middle. Mocha middle. And uh, my theory is, is the, the, the country that has it nailed is Brazil. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the color everyone Beautiful. wants to be, right? right. Yeah. That's where all the white chicks who get the spray tan, yeah. that's how they well, end up. Well, that's that they get their butt. They want the Brazilian butt. They want the butt. Brazilian they want their front. And they've and got the skin. Brazilian wax. The we wax. got the front yes. and the back. Man, we got Fuck both holes. Brazil. It's Make like it. we, love, we, love your, we love your asses. We love your shaving. We love your skin tone. Yeah. Just don't love you. Yeah, that's... <laughs> But this is why in Brazil most of the festivals are centered around the ass. Yeah. Are they? What yeah, are you yeah. They're about? all ass centric. What are you? T- what there is a festival? A, you, know, you think there's a you? You think there's a parade in Brazil where people are modestly are, um, um, dressed, walking around no, with slack? No, but the festival's not it's about all their ass. ass. <laughs> it's all ass. It's all. It's an ass centric culture right. because the ass is the perfect color. So just no matter what the festival is, it's all ass centric. <laughs> It, they, uh, Martin Luther King Day. Just ass. All when ass. It's, when the president dies. All ass. Yeah. Uh, uh, Founders Day. Founders ass day. Arbor Day. day. Arbor it's all day. a thong back and chicks <laughs> shaking their ass. Yeah. Even St. Patrick's Day. They start with the For, kilts, then they take it right off. Right yeah. off and G-string. it's just the ass. Four no, leaf clover. A, a white ass is no good for oh, a Brazilian God. thong. No. no. The no. black is a little, you know, a little, little aggressive. It is the Brazilian mocha caramel colored ass. Look, yeah. every, and that's yeah. why their asses are hanging well, look, out uh, all look, the time. Every woman in here will agree with me. We always wanted a tan ass. And you don't you can't get a tan ass unless you spray it or you go to a booth. Every woman in here knows that we'll take our clothes off and then it's just a white ass in your face yeah. with tan legs, right? I have tan all summer, we take our panties off. You're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. This fucking white melon in my face. I like I it. it. I like a tan line. You like it? You like a tan line? So you I like do. a white ass, a nice. White... I do. I like a tan. I like a tan line because I feel like, oh, that's what I've been wanting to see. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That I couldn't see at the beach. Yeah, I, I remember when I used to go to Epstein's Island. I would. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Canceled. He was I, like the copper tone girl. I came up with the best Rob Schneider vehicle, like the best movie ever for, for Rob him? Schneider. Yeah, years ago, years ago. There was this place called, in, in L.A., and you may have heard of it, Jody. It was called <laughs> Pinky Cheeks. Oh, yeah. Yes. All right. And Pinky Cheeks, which sounds like they have Froyo. It does not. It doesn't do it froyo. Does they, do they're frono. famous for their Brazilian waxing. Yes. And so what they would do is anyone who was doing a Playboy shoot, they'd send them over to Pinky Cheeks, and they would prep them. Oh, wow. Okay? So here's the Rob <laughs> Schneider vehicle. Fitz dog, you'd probably punch this up along Let the way. punch but it up. <laughs> Rob Schneider is in love with his hot blonde girlfriend. Okay. And... She gets tapped by Playboy to do a spread. Yeah. He doesn't want her in Playboy, but what's he gonna do? He's five foot nothing, she's six foot blonde, you know. She's doing what she wants to do. <laughs> he finds out they have to go to Pinky Cheeks and get the wax done, and then the next day they do the shoot. Okay. He impersonates an Asian woman <laughs> who works at Pinky Cheeks, who's gonna <laughs> Who's gonna screw up the wax job yeah, yeah. so she can't do the photo shoot? Yeah, yeah. You could picture, you know, circa 1999, yep. Rob Schneider mm-hmm. playing the Asian woman, you yeah. know, with the hot wax, you know, <laughs> spreading it all. He's got the thick glasses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Spread, spreading it all over. But, you know, there's always a twist, right? So he gets the job there, and then his girlfriend comes in, he's gonna get the girlfriend. But of course, the big fat chick comes in first, you know. It's like, you, new new girl, go work. And he's like, oh. And she's like, come on. And she throws, he's got the big hairy snatch and his hands shake. I mean, this would be a good movie for yeah, Rob yeah. Schneider, I think right? it would be. It's always got to be the big fat hairy chick comes yes. in first, right? right. It's, my, it's my 
60th wedding anniversary. <laughs> he has to take out a lawnmower first. He you see him with the, the lawnmower, yeah. the weed montage, whackers, hair the montage, flying, hair everywhere. You know, wax is going around. He gets you know? lost yeah. in there. You see his head, his legs are flailing <laughs> in the back. Yeah. yeah, of course. Right. Then the girlfriend comes in, and he has to screw up the wax job so she can't be photographed yeah. the next day, right? And of course... She doesn't know who he is, even though it's Rob Schneider just doing a bad Asian accent with a wig on, right? Right. right. We can just call it Pinky Cheeks. That's it? That's the end of the movie? No, no. There's, there's love is lost, love is found. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot, there's, I haven't even gotten to the arc or the B story yet. Yeah, I think, he, I think he mixes the wax with like some Wesson oil um. to create acne. In her whole crotch mm. area. Oh. That could be an angle. Yeah. yeah. Every woman just tighten their legs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right, ladies. <laughs> and it works as a lube for him later. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's a win win. Oh, no, no. Come on. Hey. Come oh, on, I'm Fist sorry. Dog. Is this on, a Sunday dog. night crowd? Yes. Yes. Come on. It is actually it's Sunday yeah. night. <laughs> Morgan and Morgan, people 25 to 34 of the highest amount of car crashes, and hopefully you're not in one of them. But if you're injured, you can check out Morgan and Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. Over 100 offices nationwide and more than 800 lawyers, more than $15 billion recovered for 300,000 plus clients. Morgan and Morgan has a proven track record of fighting to get you the full and fair compensation you deserve. They've been fighting for the people for over 35 years. Racing my vintage cars is hard, but submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is very easy. So if you have an issue and you've been involved in an accident, talk to my friends at Morgan & Morgan. Right, Dawson? If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to ForThePeople.com slash Adam or dial pound L-A-W, pound law, pound 529 from your cell phone. That's F-O-R, ThePeople.com slash Adam or pound law, pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. Native Path Krill Oil. Give your body the rejuvenation it deserves. Krill Oil. Now, you're probably thinking, what the fuck is Krill Oil? I'll tell you what it is. They're tiny shrimp looking creatures. Whales love to eat. And it turns out they're packed with serious health benefits for people too. Like omega-3 fatty acids, the super soldiers of the anti-inflammatory world. That's right. Every doctor I talk to says, you got to get into this stuff. They kick joint pain, inflammation, and heart problems right in the ass. No horse-sized pills or fishy aftertaste with the burps. Everyone remembers that. Burp up a marlin. Now, they've figured it out. Native Path krill oil does not work that way. Native Path is the best in the business, and they're offering my listeners a great price. As low as 19 bucks for a bottle right now. Visit GetNativePath.com slash Adam. That is GetNativePath.com. Dot com slash Adam. Take what I take. No coupon code needed. Native Path Krill Oil. All right. So we were going to do a little blah, blah, blog. And I think you guys got briefed on this one. These are actual blogs by blowhard celebrities. And Dawson's going to read them. And then we are going to have to identify who the celebrity is that's attached to the blog. We'll get three. We, we, it's, a, it's a multiple choice, but uh, we'll move forward. Do you have an opening, Dawson? It's time for Blah Blah Blog. The game where we match the celebrity with their retarded online rant. Let's play. This post will be controversial for some. At this point, breathing is controversial. I am getting many threats because people mistakenly believe I am flying Israeli flags in my show. I am not. I do not fly flags in my show in support of anything or anyone except the rainbow flag. That will remain my position. I am a human. I believe in peace, equality, love. 
I am deeply saddened by the state of the world. I will pray for all of us. <laughs> Hold on, you can't pray for everyone. <laughs> That's too many fucking individuals. It would take forever. You can't it? do that. Every kid's not unique. You can't pray for everyone. <laughs> At a certain point, you got to weed it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is it Sean Mendez, mm. Pink, or Dua Lipa? I love oh. it when they do this bullshit where they're like, listen, I don't, I don't fly any flags at my concerts. I don't hold any banners out. I won't do, except for the gay flag. But anyway, yeah. it's like, well, th that's called flying a flag. Yeah. Yeah. It counts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. All right. So this person flies the gay flag. Sean Mendez. Sean Mendez, isn't that the guy who's a musician and he was touring? And then he took a break. And he, he took a, a break. Breakdown. What the fuck is this with these 24-year-olds? He like, had a mental breakdown. I'm, I'm taking a break from yeah. hammering checks for millions of dollars and banging groupies. I need to get my head together. Yeah. It is. It is kind of ridiculous. Look at all of the rock stars of our day, at comics, musicians, and never. Tennis players, Naomi Osaka, like. Uh, tennis pros give about a three-year window. Why don't right. I take two of those off? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know, but could you imagine when you were 23 going, okay, I'm just going to take a year off a year to off. get my head together. <laughs> yeah. My stepmom would have went, you got to move out of the fucking garage. So get a job. Go get your fucking head together in a shitty apartment with three roommates. Yeah. Would you, douche? Right. Like, I'm just going to have... And also... You stroll around and play an acoustic guitar with your shirt off. It's what What do you need a break from? Yeah. <laughs> Coal miners don't need to take a year off to get their head straight. Long haul truckers, loggers, guys who work in meat packing facilities. They're like, I'm going to take a year off and kind of get my head straight, and then I'll be back to the rendering plant. Let's, let's call it about 11 and a half months. Is that, is that about right? When you were working construction, has anybody, did anybody ever take a mental health day or break? When I worked, when I worked construction, <laughs> the rules were we would take, we would get Christmas off, but you didn't get paid for Christmas. So we would do like a half day the day before Christmas, get paid for half a day, right. not get paid for Christmas, and come back the following work day after Christmas because no one could have fucking afford to take any time off of any kind. You didn't get, you didn't get paid. I mean, you would like I, during lunch, my foreman Mike Stramat would come by. And just I'd be eating a sandwich. He just tell me to run in place. <laughs> He literally, I've told this story a million times. When I was working in construction, this asshole Mike, his truck was like parked up the driveway, the house we were working on. He goes, go to my truck, get my four foot level. I was like, all right. I start walking. He goes, run. I fucking ran. I didn't need to get my head straight. I was going to yeah. get my ass kicked. Yeah. Christ. Everyone needs a fucking me day. You know, I had a guy, he'll go nameless. Well, his name is Gary Smith, but he, <laughs> he worked for me about six, about six, seven years ago. I was like, where's Gary? He's like, he's not in today. Like, where is he? Uh, half birthday. Celebrating half birthday. I go, half birthday. First off, my new policy is, is if you know your half birthday, you're fucking shit can. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm May 27th. Yeah. What's that? By the half birthdays, December 13th or something? Yeah. Like, I don't know. My fucking half birthday. And I said, half birthday? Who celebrates a half birthday? They said, now, listen, it's not his fault. It's not, he's not celebrating it. His mom loves him so much more than your mom loved you, <laughs> which the person didn't say, but that's what I heard. That she knew she couldn't surprise him on his birthday, but she could get him by surprising him on his half birthday. And there's no doubt that my kids will be missing work when they're adults because, oh, where's Sonny Corolla? He's got his uh, eighth birthday. Eight? Oh, no, one eighth. Half. Yeah, he does his half. He does quarter. He does eighths. He does sixteenths. Yeah. He's into thirty seconds too. So he may I, never come in because he's broke. He's broken his thing into sixty fourths now. <laughs> your your mom could have surprised you if she actually celebrated your birthday. That would be the that surprise. would have been a surprise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she remembered. Yeah. yeah, 
Maybe if she left her room or stopped yelling freak out with her door closed. Yeah, that would have been a surprise. All right, so is it pink? Is, is it Shawn Mendes, uh-huh. pink, or Dua Lipa? I'm going with pink. Yeah. It's definitely pink. I, I've heard this story. I'm, I'm being honest, so I'm going pink I'm on going this pink. one, too. I'm going to go uh, Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa? Li- Dua Lipa. Li- Lipa. Dua Lipa. She has yeah. the skin tone we, we mentioned earlier. She does. That nice she does. It's perfect. Caramel, yes. She's yes. the leader Caramel. of the Brazilian parade. Yeah. If I get a painter in my living room, I'm going to be like, do a leap on the sides. Do a leap on yeah. the sides. And, and yeah, she should have, on the she should have yeah. her own color at Home Depot. Yes. Benjamin Moore, do a leap. As a matter of fact, yeah. why don't we start naming those swatches after people yes, we can whose right. colors they match? You like know a yeah. nice white. I, my, I just painted my house white. I yeah, painted and, and, and white. Yes. Because we label them now. Like when yes. I used to paint, and I used to, I was a painter for a while too, our big paint colors were Swiss coffee and like Navajo white. Yeah. And and, and, and and Swiss coffee was lighter than the one that yeah, had the yes. fucking word white yeah. in it. Yeah. The one has the word white, the other has the word coffee in it, but the one with the word coffee in it is lighter than yes. the one with white. We don't need that. We'll just have Fitz Dog, Fitz Dua Lipa. <laughs> right. I'm feeling festive. Give me W.C. Field's nose. <laughs> We'll pick a color. Well, yeah. there could be a Barack and Michelle. You know, Michelle Obama would be a little bit darker yeah. than, a little bit. than Barack Obama. Yeah. Trump would be orange. Orange. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Biden would be confused. Like that, that, If you ask for the Biden, the person would be like, well, I, I, don't, know where the paint, I don't know where the paint store is. I, yeah. I, I can't help you. It's just for painting the floor. <laughs> yeah. Let's name them after people. That's yeah. what we got to do. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Don't get me started on yellow. All right. You uh, really going with Dua Lipa, Barbara Greg? Joe. Sorry, what? Fitz, you really going with Dua Lipa? He's After going with Adam Dua Lipa. said he knows who it is. Strange what are, strategy. What are you, the fucking IRS? <laughs> the I blog mean, belongs to Pink. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Why did I go with Pink? <laughs> How come she hasn't fallen to her death yet? Oh my God! Upside down all the time. Uh, she's never. She's always inverted. There's never been her one. Her pussy is always higher than her head. There's never been one person on her crew that's ever just fucking been hungover. Nothing. No one's ever. Slipped. Or just disgruntled. So, <laughs> you so know you're I mean? saying like, you're like, saying if she fell off a building, you would sing, "I'm coming down," so you better get the party started. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That should be a last one. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just saying like, all she does is crazy, trapeze shit, yeah, just right? Love it. And you're right, like. Taylor Swift gave, like, every one of her long-haul truck, you yeah. know, 18 wins. She gave them all a million dollars. Yes. Right? So then Pink, at the end of her tour, gets all her grips and everything, like a bottle of champagne. You know what I mean? And at some <laughs> point, one dude's pissed, right? Yeah, you're He's right. like, let me just loosen this carabiner up <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit, yeah. cheap-ass bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody sabotages her rig? Right. Yeah, I would definitely sabotage yeah. that rig. Yeah. Pink, more like black and blue now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one, Dawson. My son invited two school buddies to come to the country today and work with us. Stacked firewood for five hours straight. I worked them like borrowed mules. When I tried to pay them, they refused, said they enjoyed working. Paid them anyway. Strong parenting equals great kids. Mm. Is it John Rich, mm. Peyton Manning, mm. or Russell Crowe? Mm. Mm. And this is tough. This is a tough one. John Rich sounds John Richie, mm. right? I feel that way. I don't know. Could be a Peyton I, Manning. I feel like I, Although I Peyton like... Manning would have... I, I like John Rich. I, he's a country singer. I like him. Yeah, I feel it's like country. I feel like he needs to commit fully to a mustache. He has a kind of a Fu Man chewy, but sort of half a Fu Man. He's no Sam Elliott, you know. But it's oh, like yeah. it's kind of, but it's a little thin. Like he really needs to just go all in on a mustache, or just go clean. He's just a One little. Two. Never go full he stash. A, he's he's neither, a Brazilian on his face. Listen, it's been said a million times. John Rich's mustache is neither feast nor, <laughs> fish nor fowl, as they say. But this feels John Rich. I feel like Peyton Manning 
doesn't want to say anything because he has 400,000 deals, right? Yeah. Like, he's fucking pitching stuff, you know, Hawaiian bread, you know. He's doing the sliders commercial, right? He's doing insurance. Like, he has a, such a parlay. Like, him and Shaq, him and Shaquille O'Neal are literally the spokespeople for 14 different Kevin Hart, throw Kevin Hart oh, in Kevin there. Oh, Kevin Hart, yeah. 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 Kevin it. Hart's in there. I'm going to go Russell Crowe, actually, because he kind of, doesn't he live out on a farm? Russell Crowe, uh, yeah, Russell Crowe, like, remodeled an old church yeah, and then married did. his wife in it or something, yeah, which I he's fucking all hate that bullshit. Yeah, he's all you guys, <laughs> you guys gross. renewing your vows Disgusting. every other year yeah, and all this so bullshit. Gross. All it ever does, all, all... The, there's only the, there's only one way that works every single time. Every single time when you pussy whipped out there goes, like, oh, we renew our vows every single year. All the, whatever the woman I'm with, she always just looks at me and goes, oh, Adam would never do that, yeah. never. Yeah. That's all that does. Russell Crowe built a church, so he goes, oh, Adam would never do that. No. Oh, he wanted to get married at a coin op car wash. <laughs> oh, he would never. Yeah. Would you build that coin-op car wash, though? <laughs> <laughs> Remember the coin-op car wash? Did you guys, were you guys poor? Were you guys poor? <laughs> Here's how poor I always was. I, would, I lived in the apartments, for, you know, and I would go to the coin. There was one in North Hollywood. There's a yeah. coin-op car wash. And it was down. First off, the saddest dwelling on the planet was the miniature apartment at the top of the cinder block thing. Some dude lived up there. Yeah. Like, I got to keep an eye on this car wash. <laughs> <laughs> what if you just lived in a normal house down the street too far from the car wash? I got to make sure there's no shenanigans going on around here. So I'm going to live on top of this car wash. But here's how you know you're poor if you guys ever did this. The coin-up car wash had the, had the coin-up car wash. And then over here would always be the vacuum. Yeah. They'd have the vacuum cleaner. The vacuum cleaner was like 75 cents yeah. or something. Put it on the street cars, hit the things like, woo. I was like, oh, fuck. I got to vacuum yeah. every single you thing get... in this car before. This is going to randomly cut off. One minute. I think you have one minute. If I do the whole car and put the thing on my dick. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to waste one millisecond of vacuum yeah. power because yeah. I paid 75 cents yeah. for this, and there's no possible way I could set it back yeah. on with nine seconds left in this thing. So I'm, like, vacuuming yeah. shit. I'm vacuuming my own pubes. I'm pulling. The dog came by. He's like, your dog have fleas? Yeah, not anymore. Not anymore. Now, when we were so broke, we would uh, – sometimes I wouldn't have enough coins – so the right side of my car would be nice <laughs> Super and clean. clean. That's right. Left right. side is That's fucking it. muddy. Whatever you get. Yeah. All right. It could be Crow. I'm saying Crow. I think Manning is just too scared to talk about hard work. I'm saying or Crow. Anything. You're saying Crow. I'm going Crow. I'm going Rich. The blog belongs to John Rich. Oh. Thank you. And let me tell you something about kids who stack cords of firewood for five hours and then don't accept pay. They're already rich. They're so rich. They're they so fucking I, rich. I'm just going to say that. Of course they're not going to accept yeah. it. It's, it's not fucking, because they're proud. It's no, because your, your $13 yeah. doesn't mean yeah. jack squat to Richie workout. Rich over just here. Right? Work out. Yeah. yeah. When I was that age, I would go to my friend's house, not help his father, take money out of his wallet. That's, <laughs> that's how that's I roll. That's the way to do it. Yeah. All right. I'm two for two. I hate it here. The love definitely do not outweigh the hate on social media, all because I'm fat? This is crazy. Why y'all don't know how close I be to giving uh, up on everyone? Hold on, fat. Okay, we got an Asian here, people. We got an Asian. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. quitting and enjoying my money and my man on a fucking farm. <laughs> is it... Lizzo, uh, yeah. Rihanna, mm. oh, man. or Demi Lovato? Ooh. Lizzo. Lizzo. Yeah. I don't know. I think if she did my coin-op car wash vacuum challenge, <laughs> she wouldn't get half of Matt done. She just couldn't maneuver that big ass of hers over yeah. to the passenger side. She'd get in the you got to dip back behind the seats, you know, get the cigarette butts. Right. And, 
she wouldn't do well. She wouldn't fare well in my challenge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the challenge. So she said she was fat, right? Yes. It's Lizzo. Okay. She's she very said, proud All about that. because Everyone. I'm fat? Yes. And she well, wants to have sex on a farm? <laughs> she what? wants to enjoy her money and her man yeah, that's not... on a fucking farm. Oh, okay. A fucking farm. A fucking farm. Like, they, it's fucking on the farm, that's it? It's a fucking farm? I would definitely volunteer to be a ranch hand on a if it was farm? called a fucking farm. Do you, you want to come work I mean? on this fucking farm? You have to start with the goats over here. Mm -hmm. But then you show up and they... They introduced the horse with the big cock. Right. You're like, oh, wait a minute. But oh, you have to put no. 75 cents in to yeah. the horse with the big cock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's, it's Lizzo. A <laughs> Who are our three? Lizzo, Rihanna, Demi Lovato. Lizzo. Lizzo. Oh, gotta go Lizzo. She said fat, right? Rihanna's yeah. fat. Well, good job. The blog belongs to Lizzo. Yeah. All right. All right. That's, uh, that's self-evident. This next one is fairly long. Here we go. I've been struggling with my own trauma that has been reawakened as I've been watching the news since October 7th, and it feels as though it should not fall on women who may be struggling to condemn sexual violence against women. I have fought so hard to bring violence against women and girls out of the shadows and have had to break myself open to do this. I did this with so much hope for what is possible. I feel as though everyone should know that I condemn all rape and all violence against women. Why do I need to post it on social media for you to know it? And why do I have to post it in your time frame? Please, I beg of you, please be gentle. I see you. I understand the fear of erasure. What? I, I Hold see on. some chicks freaking out. What are you talking about? How dare we what? Who's making fun of it? I haven't begun to make fun of it. I was gonna make fun of it in like another 30 seconds. But now I gotta make fun of you. All right, but listen, let me explain something. We don't pick the blogs. We're playing the game. We have rules. We have rules and a little something called boundaries, which you should definitely look up when you're done being insulted by nothing. We don't pick the blogs. That's not our job. So you can't condemn us. Now, later on, when we make fun of rape, then you can step in. But all you know for now is we, we condemn all rape, along with this blogger, right? <laughs> I'm glad you've come out of the shadows, Adam. Yes, I'm taking a bold stance against rape. You are. All right, I'm guessing Madonna. <laughs> I'm going Rose McGowan. <laughs> You're dancing around it. Is it Cher? Mm. Alyssa Milano? Oh, no. It's her. It's her. Uh, or <laughs> Ashley Judd? You know it's Alyssa. Or who? Ashley Judd. It's oh, Alyssa. Ashley Judd's pretty nuts. Uh, Alyssa. Alyssa Milano. Who are these bloviating douchettes who just go, I... Don't condemn. I want to live in a world. Yeah, bitch, you and everybody else, except for members of Hamas, would like us to all live in a world that was rape free. Yes. Since 1972. I just thought what I'd a, put that in front of my business. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, nobody wants any of this no. shit. I know. We, every, everyone should have world-class health care. No child should go to bed hungry. Right. Nobody should ever be raped. Thank you for the proclamation. Thank you, hero. Oh, my God. She's right. She's leaving. She's leaving. All right. All right. Look out for my special. It's coming out in the spring. <laughs> my special is coming in the spring. How does it? I'll be at the La Jolla <laughs> Comedy you Store see catch in Greg. February. Catch me, though. Follow me on social media. See you there. Thank you. How does it work, I mean, like in the offenso meter? You know what I mean? Like, like so Dawson reads a quote from Alyssa Milano or Cher Melissa. or Ashley Melissa. Judd about an right. anti-rape thing. Right. And then we get accused of being a rapist. Better seats. Look at these girls. Then... Fucking snuck right in. Get those seats. Get those seats. And then, and then she leaves. But what, what I'm... 
What I'm saying is, is all right, this is just one part of her evening we we're able to share. Thank God, God willing, we got to share a little time with this princess. But what I'm saying is, is what about going to a movie where somebody gets raped? No. What about a book where someone gets raped? What if she goes into a store and overhears a story about a that, woman who got raped? Does she just have to stand yes, up and leave? That's why she's here, because she's been kicked out of every other place. <laughs> I, Adam, I honestly, I thought this was a safe space, the Adam Carolla <laughs> show. I thought it would be too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, it, it feels Alyssa Milano because... It feels because Alyssa Milano. Cher is usually mumble-jumble. I mean, her posts are hilarious, but they don't make sense, right? They don't, you can't read them. They're very strange. She's angry. I Really, the only, said, the only like reason I'm, I... Is Cher going to leave the country if Trump wins? Because if that's true, I'm definitely voting for Trump. And Alyssa Milano, I love Alyssa Milano because... She, her whole thing is like, I every night lay in my Macbeth, daughter's bed yes. and I weep for her yes. future. It's like, you want to give a bitch an eating disorder, that's how you do it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Find your six year old, lay in her bed, and weep for her future. Yeah. You want to fuck a chick up? That's exactly the way to do yeah. it. Yeah. She was right here, grown up. And how long before? Here. <laughs> that was fucking what happens when your mom gets in bed with you. Yeah. How long before the kid catches on? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Honey, <laughs> unlock the door. Mom, you're not weeping for my future. It's been 221 nights yeah. in a row. One more night. Yeah. One more Just night. one more night of laying on your pillow and weeping openly for you. Yeah, Mom, I'm counting fucking sheep. I got a test tomorrow in the third grade. I need to catch some fucking Z's. Why don't you go lay down next to Dad and weep for his future? <laughs> Oh, he's already or crying. Or better yet, give him a blowjob and let's all go to bed. <laughs> all right, so we think Alyssa Milano. I'm going to say Alyssa. Okay, Greg, what Greg? do you think? Yeah, I got to I gotta go Alyssa Milano on this one. All right, it's unanimous. Well, the blog belongs to Alyssa Milano. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dawson, these are too easy. Come on. I believe so. Well, let's see. Let's get one more in there. All right, one more. I smile when the narrative generators use the MAGA Republicans trope as if it will divide conservatives. It might have worked until Colorado. Now I think they have handed Trump the nomination. That, of course, is their plan. They think he is the only one Biden can beat. They overplayed their hand, though. Now, being a MAGA Republican, will be seen as a badge of honor fighting the most corrupt mob of hooligans since the Democrats founded the Ku Klux Klan. Is it Scott Baio? Scott Baio. Oh, wow. Where's he? Randy been? Quaid. Ooh. Or James Woods. Ooh. Oh. Wow. Oh. I think it's... Could be Jimmy Woods. Sounds like James Woods, but that's, that's a, a tough good one. one. Where's Scott Baio been lately? Yeah. Uh, Kid Rock's not in the running on this one. <laughs> John Rich. I was uh, thinking of this joke. Seems like a good time to share it with you guys. Is it about rape? <laughs> no, but for the late show, I do about uh, 45 minutes I'm on gonna, rape. I'm, I'm going to weep for your future. By the way, I... Would you crawl in bed I with started me, though? This, I started the show off with 10 minutes of pedophilia jokes, no. and the bitch didn't even That's fucking exit. That's the one! That's the one! <laughs> I started the show by giving helpful hints to budding pedophilias. Yes. Or, or pedophilias. Yes. I think I made a new word up. Yeah. And she didn't as much as yawn. Yeah. Well. I think I, o I opened with an Epstein's Island joke. You she did. fucking right. laughed her ass off. Everything's fine. I yeah. know. And Dawson brings up rape and she's out of here. <laughs> Shot out of a cannon. No, the joke I was thinking about was... Uh, Bill Burr was on uh, Jimmy Kimmel's show a couple of weeks ago, and his clip like made the rounds where he like looked at Jimmy. He's like, "You're the problem. All you progressives are going to get Trump elected again because you keep you keep going after him. You keep trying to prosecute him, and you're going to turn him into a martyr, which is the thing you start hearing now. Like every time 
some court c case comes down or somebody from Colorado says we're going to get him off the ballot, his poll numbers go up, right? So, so you've essentially turned him into a martyr. And I was like, yeah, I think I agree with Bill Burr. Like, I think that's true, but not a traditional martyr. Traditionally, martyrs, you know, Jesus Christ, Gandhi, skinny guys with sandals, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one ever like, where's the martyr? Oh, he's yeah. eating Chick-fil-A on a private jet. Yeah. Where's he? Oh, no, he's yeah. plowing Euro trash. He might be, he's definitely on the links. Yeah. Now, martyr's got a weight limit. You can't hang yeah. a fat guy on a cross. Yeah, once you hit yeah. 235. Once you hit 235, you're yeah, no longer yeah. the martyr yeah. running. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm just saying flying privately, golfing all day, and being morbidly obese is probably not martyr. <laughs> uh, not traditional martyr, though. No, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Not what we picture biblically right. yeah. when we say martyr. Right. You know what I mean? All right. So this is tough. Could be Bayo. Could be Randy Quaid. Randy Quaid. Randy, Randy um, Quaid's that man. No? That's the right, that's James the curveball. That's the curveball, right? James Woods, because I James like Woods. I like the look. You going right? James Woods? Yeah. Going James Woods. James Woods. No help from the studio audience. I took now it. is you saying it's James Woods because you know something? No. Oh. Oh. Oh, she read no. it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> All right, I'm going pink. <laughs> Lizzo. <laughs> I'm going pinko. The greatest, pinko. fattest, high wire singing act, flute playing, yes, why does fat Lizzo? singing act ever. Lizzo should start doing that pinko. high wire. <laughs> I would, they should tour together just to call it the yes, pinko the tour. Yes, the pinko tour, and then you put Lizzo up there? That's right. <laughs> the blog belongs Hold on. to... I would like Lizzo to get up in that rafter. Yes! I would love Lizzo to get inverted, like put the harness on and go sailing around, which would be a great show, but the audience would be scared shitless. Like, oh no, shit, I brought my kids. It's like Duck Duck Goose just there's coming no way around. That's, there's no way that ceiling truss is going to hold up. It's I only think... meant for an 8,000 pound snow load. I think her name is really Liz, but then you see her and you go, Liz, oh. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we need another one. Because, because, oh, oh well, go ahead. No. Well, here's what we got. We now have a tie game. No. We do. Because the blog belongs to James Woods. So yeah. Jody Miller, skinny Jody Miller, has caught up with the ace man. No. And Greg Fitzdog, it <laughs> yeah. seems that your uh, interesting strategy of picking Dua Lipa in the beginning did not work <laughs> out this time. <laughs> So we're going to ask you to sit out of this one. There will be two options. This is between Jody and Ace. All right. Sit out? Yes, sir. Sit I out. fucking drove here from Los Angeles. <laughs> Do a Lipa. You can still give Climate it Climate change. Mm. Reproductive rights. Mm. Voting rights. Immigration. Gun safety. We're facing so many challenges. But unless we rid ourselves of the toxicity of Donald Trump, we have no way of meeting those challenges. Mm. Is it Rob Reiner mm. or Joy Behar? Uh, mm. uh, joy. Oh. It's going with Joy. Can I ask, can I, ask, can I get Greg's advice or no? First off, it's Joy. at some point, she's got to change her name, right? Because it's no longer... She hasn't been joyful just, in you fucking can, decades. You, 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 you can't be a bloviating sourpuss bitch for fucking 20 years and still go no. with the name Joy. No, God, no. And for that matter, I say Hunter Biden needs to change his name to Gatherer. <laughs> I don't feel like he's out hunting. He's out collecting money. <laughs> so he's much more of a gatherer than a hunter. Fair. Fair. And for that matter, the organization GLAD needs to change their name. They're the most angry fucks on the planet. It's a gay and lesbian, anti, whatever. So They're the angriest to? people. Uh, do what Ad? the mothers and drunk drivers do. They need to be called mad. Mad. The GLAD is not happy at all. <laughs> GLAD are the most angry, sourpuss bitches on the planet. They, I, I, Hamas should change their name to GLAD. It would be more... <laughs> It would be more fitting. 
Joy. All right. I'll I let you go joy. first, Joy. I went with Joy. Because, you went with Joy. Yeah. So I got to go with Dua Lipa. Rob yes. Reiner. Oh, Rob Reiner. All right, I'll go with Rob Reiner. <laughs> this is for the win. The blog belongs to... Oh, Joy. Yeah. It's Rob Reiner. The ace oh, man wins yeah. it. Yeah. Until next time, keep your fingers on your keyboards and your heads up your asses so we can play another round of Blah, Blah, Blah. Somebody needs to run down that bitch who left 20 minutes ago and tell her justice prevailed. It did. It's just curious, Adam. I've done your show probably over 100 times. Yeah. Every game we've ever played, you've won. And mm. yet... <laughs> Strange. No, Weird. no, that's untrue. I used to lose many, many, many games. I would lose a uh, Rotten Tomatoes game quite frequently. Oh, yeah? Paul Bryan would always... When uh, he won uh, 72% of the time or something, yeah. something like that. I would never stack the deck in my, uh, my behalf. Well, you pay <laughs> the people that put the questions together, correct? I do, oh, but I... not very much. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt if Dawson was rigging my trapeze yeah, wire, that yeah. carabiner be, would come yeah, undone. Right. Yeah. And I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be propelling myself with a wheelchair that used a straw to, ma to manipulate it through the aisle at Target. So. <laughs> now, when I pull up to your studio, there's a parking lot out front, and uh, you can tell if Adam's there or not, because then there's one nice car in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way I like it. <laughs> oh, 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 Riley. Don't miss do-it-right deals at O'Reilly Auto Parts. How long has it been since you've changed your spark plugs? Yeah, that's a good question. Replacing your spark plug can, can restore efficiency and performance to your vehicle. Get better gas mileage as well. And right now at O'Reilly Auto Parts, get a $12 O'Reilly gift card after rebate when you purchase four or more select AC Delco Iridium spark plugs. Maintain your performance and fuel mileage with new spark plugs from O'Reilly Auto Parts. You can also improve visibility with their new wiper blades. Right now, save 12 bucks on a pair of Rain-X Rugged XL wiper blades. Plus, get two times O rewards points. An extra large profile and premium features make rugged XL blades the right choice for extreme weather and driving durability. The professional parts people will even install your new pair of wiper blades for free. From spark plugs to wiper blades and more, save now with Do It Right deals in store at O'Reilly Auto Parts or O'ReillyAuto.com. All right, now we got a little news Chris could do. We also got the balls in the hopper there that you guys filled out oh, your ping pong ball. Hot balls. Behind, uh, before the show. Let's see. What a, I don't know. Should we do news or want to go to the hopper? Hopper. Let's do the hopper. The, the, the hopper has it. I think, uh, I don't know if Chris going to bring it out. Where's Chris? No plan? Oh, there we go. Where, what is your plan, Chris? You going to do the news? Well, where are you? Is what I'm saying. Were you going to do the news from back there? Oh, like behind the stage? All right, anonymously. No, well, you're not going to come out. And... This is. All right. So what are you doing? Taking a shit? What's going on? <laughs> All right, do the news from behind the curtain. I want the Chris, anonymous news. Chris, oh, come, here, anonymous come here for news. a second. Come here. What kind of car do you drive in what year? A 2015 Toyota Prius. <laughs> Same shit you got. Used. <laughs> same, same car I have. All right, Chris, give us one news story from behind the curtain. I want to see what this sounds like, the anonymous news, and then <laughs> we'll get into this. All right, we have a local story mm -hmm. right here in North County. A woman has pled guilty to hiring a hitman to kill her husband. Yes. Mm. Yes. yes. So her and her husband, they, uh, they tried to, in 2012, they tried to start a horse acrobat show that failed miserably. <laughs> Shocking. And 
And uh, so after it failed, they got, they, they started fighting. It didn't work out very well. They both filed for divorce. And eventually, this woman, well, first off, the, the guy's Hold house Hold on a burned. second, Chris. Yeah. Y you know, in order to start the horse acrobat show, they needed some seed money. You know what I mean? Right. And one of them had to have, like, a, a successful attorney or physician brother. So they had to go pitch him. Right. The idea, like they had yeah. to go, they had to go in and go. Look, man, I got a real opportunity for you, Rob. Real opportunity. Get in on the ground floor of what I think is going to be a thriving business. <laughs> what do you want to do? You want to open another like falafel joint or something? No, oh, no, 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 no. Much, much more lucrative. Much more lucrative than that. Like a, when you do like a mobile detailing business for cars. Or something. No, <laughs> no, that's jump. No, no. This is a horse acrobatic show. <laughs> Horse acrobatic show. I've never even heard of that. Exactly. Exactly. It's never been done. How does it work? We haven't really worked out the details. Yeah, we're going to need 50 large just to kind of, you know, we need horses. We need rope. We need uh, the, the shoe. What do they call the thing where they put on the hood there? The shoe? Is that a shoe? Horseshoe. I'm not a horse expert. <laughs> And I have, no, I have no background in the circus whatsoever, but this is a million-dollar idea. <laughs> the 50 grand, just, we, I guess we need hay, you know what I mean? And I got to get one of those trailers where they can hang their head out of it, you know? I don't know. I don't know why we can't just move in a fucking U-Haul. It's a goddamn horse. But either way, this is a golden opportunity for you to get in on the ground floor. Now, wait, are you talking about, like, animation? Would this be animated? No, no, this is horse acrobatics. These are, you know Pink? Yes. <laughs> you ever see her? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah. It's majestic, is it yeah. not? Yeah. Imagine if she did the same thing on top of a horse. <laughs> so the horse is upside down, the horse is... Yeah, that's why it's called horse acrobatics. <laughs> Okay, if you don't have any imagination, I'll go <laughs> fucking across the street. So you'll be sorry. This is Apple stock, and it's 1989. You want in or not? Yeah, okay. of course right. I want in. <laughs> now listen, it's not like this whole thing's going to go south and my wife's going to hire a hitman to kill me or anything. <laughs> This is going to be bigger than Blue Man. You understand? I will franchise this shit. Yeah. It will be in Vegas. It will be in Paris. It'll all, and we'll just be sitting home, not hiring hitmen. <laughs> Getting rich. With my horse acrobatics idea. <laughs> the animal least able to move in any exactly. direction except for straight forward. Exactly. Right. And straight up. That's what makes it amazing. <laughs> what happened, Chris? So. All right. So, so uh, actually, Adam, this was a multi-million dollar production. So $50,000 oh. was undershooting. I, and again, just, just, just to wet your beak, you're not going to get the lion's share. Right. 50 grand gets you three shares. That's all. That's all. About 3% of the business. It's a multi-million dollar business. In fact, after the, the show failed, the first director of the show told the Union Tribune, quote, they had no clue what they were doing about anything. They weren't horse people, and they weren't show people. I told you up front, I didn't know horses, and I didn't what, know acrobatics. What's the, what's the name? What are you going to call it? Oh, I'll, I'll call it uh, Hooves of Flame. <laughs> I Is mean, it? I'm, I'm spitball, and there's going to be, you know, I'll come up with other ones, okay. you know. <laughs> Arabian Nights, you know what I mean? You know, something, something catchy, something, something sexy, you know? Cir Cirque de Soho. Hey. Cirque oh. de Soho. Oh, hey. oh that's right. And Rob, that's why, I, I, that's why I'm pitching to you, you. because you're For the idea shares. man. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know I don't know anything about horses. Right. I don't know anything about acrobatics or, or trapeze show. or anything. Uh -uh. But I do know a good idea good name. when I think of one really drunk. And now your, your relationship with your wife, pretty solid. She doesn't have any built Rock up. Rock at uh, Gibraltar. Yeah. She's, uh, she wants this too. This is what she really wants. Oh, my God. Listen, I, of course, I built a church so I could marry her. <laughs> We're going to renew our vows. Yeah. We're going to renew our vows as soon as we hammer that first million-dollar check from my uh, uh, horse doulet. What, what do we call it? 
Uh, Cirque du Soleil. Cirque du Soleil. As soon as that first check clears, yeah. we're going on a second honeymoon. All right. <laughs> yeah, maybe going to France, you know. I could uh, probably pitch my idea over there. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, she loves me. She would never hire a hitman to kill me. <laughs> She would never even entertain that. Uh, and she has no resentment left over from your dolphin juggling <laughs> venture? Listen, listen. I, you know, fuck those PETA people, you know what I mean? <laughs> that was a great idea, and then they had to go sticking their fucking beaks up into everyone's business, you know? You juggle a few dolphins, yeah. and all of a sudden, you got Pam Anderson out there on a whole letter-writing campaign. Don't get me started on that bitch. <laughs> that was a fucking great idea. She didn't come snooping along. What was the name of that one again? That... Oh, that was called Juggling with Porpoise. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I did? I, I took Purpose yeah. and Porpoise yeah, yeah, yeah. and I kind of just tweaked yeah, yeah. it that just a little took, bit. That should have taken off. I, don't... <laughs> I wish that fucking Pam Anderson would have shut her blowhole. <laughs> right. I'll tell you that. Right. It was a million dollar idea. But anyway, my... My horse acrobatics <laughs> idea. That's this that's, is the one. This is the one. That's that's the one. And I know we did uh, we did armadillo racing, and we <laughs> we, we we did um, we did groundhog ballet, and I know we yeah. did it. I know we did it all. Yeah. But this is the one, and this that's why it. I need the cash. Yeah, it feels so, right. So right. July of last year, a fire destroys the couple's home. Mm -hmm. And the deputies get an anonymous tip that the woman was trying to hire someone to kill her husband. Mm. So August of last year, this woman meets with a potential hitman. She brings money, guns, and details of how to kill her husband and where to dispose of the body. But it was a sting. Ah. Yeah, so the so hitman was sting. an undercover sheriff's detective. She was arrested that day. She's pled guilty and will be in prison for three, three years and eight months. Three years? That's it? Shit, ladies, not that's, that's not part a lot of the plea of time. deal. Any ladies out there that want to do that, three years is like nothing. Well, right. they, they would have put under house arrest, except uh, <laughs> it was on fire. It's on fire. Burned to the ground. She, this sounds like she greased the DA's palm. Like, uh, hey, you in, in the market for a horse? Horse? You want to do a horse? And does that horse act? Actually, I love horses. Okay. <laughs> well, we can strike a little deal. I don't know. I would. Uh, Isn't it always a sting? It's always, it's a, always sting. a sting when somebody yeah. tries to hire someone. Yep. It's never legit. It's always a sting. The hitmen are, are always always the sting keep, operations. They keep doing yeah. it though. They keep setting it up. They keep doing it. But what what would you do? Like I would be paranoid, and I'd be paranoid that they would be recording yes, me. Yes, of course. So you'd have to do it in a hot tub, right? <laughs> like I'd be like, we're. Uh, <laughs> I want to We're meet. Gonna... Where do you want to meet? A local diner? No. Uh, Matthew Perry's house. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know it works. Yeah. And he's not yeah. using it. Well, no. I mean, look, he, he'll be missed. There's no doubt. Yeah. But I just mean, we could have a conversation in that hot tub. Right. Yeah. And the only problem with the hot tub is that you couldn't wear a wire. You can, though. You can but wear the your neighbors glasses. would hear you. Yeah. Because you'd be like, I want you to kill my husband. Well, hold on, the bubbles. What were you saying? <laughs> I want you to kill my and the, the neighbors would be like, hey, pipe down. We're trying to sleep over here. <laughs> it's loud in the jacuzzi. Yeah. But you'd have to do it in the jacuzzi. No, what if someone came in the jacuzzi, they were wearing glasses, you're wearing glasses, and that little, like, it was a little microphone right there. you got to strip it all the way down. Maybe we could do it in one of those hipster float tanks. You know yeah, what I mean? Like a two-manner. Yeah. Well, let's just get in here. Uh-huh. Let's get down to our <laughs> underoos and see if we can oh, talk a little naked. turkey. You have to be naked. You to be totally naked. you got to be naked. You hire a hitman, you got to be naked. And you got to be in a hot tub. tub. Right. And that's, the only tub. Way, that's the only way it's going to work. Right. Yeah. Because they are always wired. They meet in the car. They have conversations. The car's all wired car. up. They meet in the diner. That's all, that's all wired up. Then, no. No. And also, I, I think I'd be a bad undercover cop because I'd just, I'd just say, <laughs> come on. I'm, I'm a cop. Like, <laughs> like, how bad a guy is he? Come on. Like, this is going to yeah. get really weird. Just fucking, let's just, just let him live. You know what I mean? Just get on a horse built for two and just go off into the sunset. 
Sorry. Yeah, it is weird when they, you know, they build up that 10-year relationship mm-hmm. in the mo- with a mafia guy, and they yeah. never have any feelings for him in the end. They're still angry during yeah. the arrest. Now mm-hmm. I got you, mother. We just had coffee. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is that the end of the story, Chris? That's it. All right, I'm going to turn to uh, the hopper here. Right. And, Jody, I'm going to turn this thing, and then you pull the, you pick the ball out. Hold on. And then you... Say what's on the ball so uh, I don't get uh, caught tampering and stuff. Racing. Racing. Yes. I like racing. I like uh, racing movies. I just watched that uh, stupid uh, Gran Turismo oh. movie, which wasn't really that, that bad. I mean, you guys know that I, I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Me and fucking... <laughs> Me and Vin Diesel both live our lives yeah. a quarter mile at a time. Um, I love racing. I hate the fact that I'm the only person who loves racing, and I can't talk about it to anybody, <laughs> especially comedians, because they don't give a fuck about racing. Yeah. They hate cars. I mean, this guy, you drove here in a fucking Prius, right? That's right. Spitz dog. Half a gallon from L.A. to here. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, all I got is Patrick Dempsey. That guy I can talk to about racing. And I'm also a little devastated in the racing department because the Ferrari movie wasn't very good. And Michael Mann has been wanting to make this Ferrari movie for 40 years. Robert De Niro was going to play like a 45-year-old Ferrari. I sat in Michael Mann's office and he showed me the script and he talked about Ferrari. He's been trying to make this Ferrari movie for 40 years and then he made it and it's like, eh. <laughs> Which is really all you need to know about life. Don't ever make, none of you people ever make a movie. Let me tell you what making a movie involves. Making a movie involves you raising a bunch of money You working tirelessly, you working 17-hour days, oftentimes over the span of years, and then eventually you put your heart, your soul, and your blood and your passion into this project, and you show it to three of your friends, and you go, what do you think? And they go, it's all right. (laughs) And that's it. That's what making a a movie is. Michael Mann spent 40 years trying to get this movie made. He made it. It's 71 on Rotten Tomatoes with the critics and 71 with the people. Yeah, it's like, right. nah, nah, give it a yeah. C. It's a C minus. You know, yeah. It's like, yeah. that's, that's it. That's the, um, that's, uh, what is it, racing? Racing. <laughs> yeah. It's racing. <laughs> that's what it is. Now, I, uh, I happen to, uh, to love it, and I will tell you this. I was, I was touched and moved a little because uh, my son is now of the age where he can drive. And I was watching football with him, and I had a beer, you know. And so uh, when we're done watching football, this uh, shop, I said, "Uh, why don't you drive, son? He said, fine. He drove, and he was driving hard, like he was driving angry, which I like. And I... (laughs) I like it. I like, I like it when people drive fast. I fucking hate it when people drive slow. I hate Uber, and I hate taking rides everywhere because the fucking Uber. You ever get the Uber guy driving to the airport, and you're driving along the freeway, and fucking broken-down minivans are flying past you, and a guy with a rickshaw and a pedicab, you know, and everyone's just blowing past you? It's, it's like the... The, the Wizard of Oz scene where the tornadoes and a cow flies by you, an acrobatic yeah. horse. So yeah. they're like, you're like, I'm literally in the back seat trying to pump the car forward. Like, Come on. <laughs> Sonny was driving hard. And I said to him, you kind of like this, right? He went, uh, yep. And then um, I said, maybe you want to race a car. And he goes, sounds good. Which is, you know, I don't know why as a parent I have to talk my kids into fun shit. <laughs> when I was a kid, no adult tried to talk me into fun. Yeah, come on, have another donut. I don't know, old man, not so fast, you know. <laughs> what the fuck happened? Can you imagine, like, you know, Christmas comes and goes. I got an entire, I got an entire apple pie sitting in my refrigerator for four days, untouched. I, I told the sh- uh, on the podcast the other week, but 
I had six teenage boys in my house the other day. I show up with an apple pie, and I go, come on, boys, dig in. They're like, we're good. <laughs> go eat the fucking pie. Like, we're good. I was, I was still in Dawson on the ride up here. Jimmy Kimmel's uh, son, Kevin, when he was about eight, maybe nine years old, he came over to my warehouse, and in the back of the warehouse, I had a full go-kart back there, and at some point, I saw Kevin, I was just talking to Jimmy in the front of the shop, and I saw Kevin, like, in the back of the shop, and he literally gets, walks up on the go-kart, and he steps over it, and he keeps <laughs> walking. And I'm like, are you fucking nuts? Yeah. If I was nine and there was a go-kart in some guy's shop, I'd be in it making noises. Yeah. I didn't even need an engine. I, I'll provide it. I sat in my stepdad's Pontiac, just went, Rawr. And so I was like, there'd be like, whose go-kart is this? Let's fire it up. What the fuck's going on? Let's get it outside. Who's with me? Yeah. Not, no, nah, they don't care. They don't care. All right, let's pull another. <laughs> pull another ball. I'm sorry. But don't you think for your son, sounds good is probably the most you're going to get out of excitement. It sounds good for a teenage boy uh, nowadays. Uh, they're like... just, they're, you, teenage boys, it doesn't, there's, you can't bribe them. By the way, like I'd say, if I said to my son, like, hey, take the garbage out, he'd go, like, yeah. I'd go, take the garbage, I'll give you $10. He'd be like, I'm cool. <laughs> well, yeah. I got Apple Pay. <laughs> I just ordered $70 worth of Grubhub, dude. What do you think I'm going to shake my ass for $10? <laughs> I just ordered $80 worth of Chipotle to be brought to the house. $80 of uh, Chipotle? Yeah, so That's what am I doing? Getting up and shaking a tail feather for your old ass? You can't even bribe kids. No. doesn't make a difference to them anymore. No, when my kid was little, I said, uh, let's build a go-kart. And I thought that would be a fun project, so... We, meaning I, built the entire fucking go-kart. And I was like, all right, let's find the biggest hill in Mar Vista and let's go tearing down it. And so I put him in all my hockey equipment so that he didn't die. <laughs> and we went halfway down the hill and he, I had to coax him. I had to say, come on, let's ride the... I, I fucking built At least go down the hill yeah. with me. And so we go halfway down the hill and he starts having fun and then he starts slaloming mm. and the thing flipped and we went oh. rolling down the side of the... We were covered in blood... And we crawled to the side of the road, and then he just started laughing, and he goes, that was great. Oh. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There you go. So he's straight. Good yeah. job. <laughs> All right. Let's try another one here. Here, you can, you can read this one. I want to include you. All yeah. right. Uh, spinnaker. What's a Spinnaker. Spinnaker. Is that the mast on a boat? It's either part of a boat or a gay position. <laughs> or both. Depends. Depends who's on the boat. Is a spinnaker a, is that a maritime thing? Sailboat. Sailboat. A sailboat is it the thing? sail? Oh, you fucking blue bloods over here. I live next to San Diego. My mistress is the sea. <laughs> My mistress is the sea. <laughs> oh, man. You should walk the plank for that joke. <laughs> you should be keel-hauled for your rape talk, Dawson. Yeah. Avast there, m'lady. How about another beer? <laughs> you landlubber. You know, it's not landlubber or landlubber. It's landlubber. I don't know if you guys know that. I have no fucking idea what to do on a sailboat. Uh, oh, the most I got, I grew up in North Hollywood. Uh, I hope you guys are all sitting down, but the Corollas didn't do a lot of sailing. <laughs> that would have been like, I could only imagine how far my dad was away from owning a boat. Like owning a boat would require money. It would bring joy. It would involve burning calories toward your family. It would involve being outdoors and in the sun. My fucking, I owned a football with no threads in it when I was a kid that I found in a park and it was bulging like a hernia yeah. was. And that's, that's all. And I just kicked it around the fucking yard. I didn't even have a tee. I put it in a miniature cup that I wanted a Pop Warner football game and I would set it there and I'd just run at it and kick it. And then I would go to the other side of the yard and kick it back. A sailboat. Oh my God. My dad, I, I, my dad, if I said to my dad, hey dad, uh, could you buy me 
a bowling ball. He'd be like, oh, fuck no. Not even close. Like, there's no, there's no way. You know the greatest, you know who had the greatest childhood ever? Bill Simmons. Bill Simmons, the sports guy. Because I said to him once, I go, uh, Bill, because I remember he told me a story. I go, Bill, you're, didn't your dad's yacht sink? And he goes, no, 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 that was my stepdad's yacht. My dad's yacht was fine. <laughs> I was like, oh, you fucker. You're two yacht, kid. Two yachts. Two yachts, and I have a football with no threads. I'm kicking it like Charlie Brown on a dirt lawn in North yeah, Hollywood. Yeah. He's like, no, but not that yacht. No, my sister's yacht is fine. <laughs> My stepdad's yacht's good. The maid's yacht's fine. We used to sail on that <laughs> all the time. It was my stepdad's yacht. Where the, that was where the issue was. The only time I've sailed was we were down in Florida at, in the Everglades, and me and my sister, some fucking redneck lunatic with a mullet, rented us a little tiny sailboat in the oh. Everglades. No fucking instruction. And so we go out, and of course the wind is behind us, and I'm feeling like, you know, I, I'm Ahab. I, we're flying along. Sails are full. The spinnaker, the spinnaker was fucking humming along. Mm-hmm. And we Good get years. out, and then I go, how the fuck do we get back? <laughs> and so I, spin, I try to spin it around, and the boat, it's just a little, I think it's called a sunfish. Is that what they're called? Yes. It's a sunfish, and it flips over, and, and the mast goes under the water. We're in the water, but there's alligators in wow. the water. And so we get up on the side of the boat, and my sister, who was probably seven, and I was about 11, she starts crying, and so I slapped her. <laughs> and so she started crying harder. Yeah. And then we got in, and my friend, they, they had to come out and tow us. And then, uh, and then my, my father said, what happened? And my sister said... Greg slapped me, and then my father slapped me. Oh, and then I started Good family crying. fun. Yeah. <laughs> so fuck spinnakers and fuck boats. Uh. <laughs> All right. Let's pull another. Let's pull another. Another one. Dick. Dick. Crazy. All right, let's talk. Uh, <laughs> let's talk dick. Let's talk dick. I will. I, 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 I noticed. I saw some strange dick yesterday. And, and I know, and I was talking about this backstage. I just got back from uh, Arizona. <laughs> I did four shows in Arizona. And, and the hotel I'm staying at, the Fairmont, has a facility. They have the sauna, they have the steam room, and they have the cold plunge. Oh, oh yeah, love that. And I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but dudes under 40 wear trunks now in the sauna in the steam oh, bath do? in the jacuzzi they walk around with swim trunks on and i'm like i don't know what the fuck is going on but i started noticing the dudes now not 75 year old dudes with the sack dragging on the <laughs> tile those dudes i've been to the y in burbank and seen an 80 year old guy shoot pool nude yeah. like those fucking dudes are the ones who hike their leg up on the counter and talk to you you know yeah. with the sack swinging in the wind you know they old dudes are sacked in- for days yeah so young dudes wear shorts yeah. now they wear swim trunks so i was like i didn't have swim trunks because i'm old dude you know i'm <laughs> I'm grandfather sacked in, you know, I can spread my sack wherever I want. So, but then I realized I wanted to go for the cold dunk and I was kind of wishing I had some trunks, right? Yeah. yeah. Cause that fucking, that cold pool will humble a man. <laughs> and you know, I'm, I wasn't too proud before I got into the cold pool <laughs> after I, 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 after I got out of the cold pool, I had to fucking sneeze and pinch my nose just to get my cock to pop oh, out. That's how you do it? That's how you do it, oh, yeah. I didn't uh, know you that. can also have someone box your ears. Yeah, okay. That'll get your yeah, cock yeah, out, right, too. Right. I can do a thing where I put my thumb in my mouth uh, and I try to exhale yeah. real hard. That'll get it out. Or if you, you go to fart and you push, but you clench your ass cheeks, yeah, yeah. it pushes the air forward. Yeah, you do a retrograde fart yeah. and it'll pop out. Right. Yeah, that's another technique. Yeah. There's three or four. There's a handful of techniques. I'm not here to sell you which one's better. Yeah, I just no, happen to use. They're I different. do the nose. I do the sneeze and yeah, I grab yeah, the yeah. nose. And then the cock popped out, right. you know. So I was, 
So I'm like walking around in my towel, you know, but I'm, I'm kind of curious about who the dudes are that are rocking the board shorts in the male only side of the gym where it's just jacuzzis and sinus and everything. So I see this good looking dude and he's younger. He's like, yeah, he's like 30, 35. He's got like a good build on him. And I'm coming out of the sauna and he's getting ready to head into the cold dunk pool. And I'm like, all right, see what he's got out of that towel. First things first. Wow. He takes the towel off and he has another towel under it. <laughs> he double toweled it. Double toweled. He did. Uh, remember, remember the movie Airplane? Yes. When the, when the chief like pulled the sunglasses glasses off, there's yes. enough. That's what he did with yeah. his cock, you know? So I'm looking at the guy and he's young and I'm like, okay, was he doing the shorts thing? Because everyone under 40 is right. in shorts. So this guy's 32. So he's definitely in shorts. Pulls a second towel off, totally naked, huge hog. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you make why. exceptions, don't you? Yeah. You know what I mean? The big swinging dick is not wearing the board shorts into right, the. No. Into the uh, and then I went, I went so gay. I went, <laughs> I couldn't stand there and stare at his dick and try to figure out what happened when he got out of the cold. Yeah. Dug and by, I just got mine, yeah. you know. It's going to be Back another out. six weeks of summer because I just got the winter. I got Puxitani fill out. Of, just got of, him out. Got of, him out of, of his hole. Of my You know, I just, I just released my dick from my innards, you know. <laughs> so I was you like. It, you brought uh, a knife to a gunfight. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, this, I brought, I, I brought chapstick to a sausage fest. I think that's I, I think what, I, what I would say. But, but I know yeah, what you're saying. You're right. So <laughs> his, he's got this big hog, you know, and he's good looking, you know, like, come on, but God. He's got it both, all. One or the other, you know. So he's got this big dick. And his thing, I'm sure his policy is, yeah, I'm young, but I got a huge right. dick. So right, yeah. I, like to, I like to wave it around the locker here. So, so he, he gets into the, into the cold tub and I'm like, I want to see what happens when he gets out of the cold tub. You just tub. stood there? You stand there? Did you, what'd you do? You well, can't you just can't, stand there. What? You, can't, you can't just stand there well, and you, stare like at a guy's this? dick. You're just doing back and no, forth? No, you or? have to pretend to stretch. Okay. Yeah. I need to know. If you yeah. pretend to stretch, you can stare at anybody's dick. You can do that. Long. So yeah. you're, he's, I need to see the visual. He's in the cold tank. You're standing where? You can where? stare at cock for hours if you're just stretching. Just like that? You know, you have to, right. have to stretch. No, I did. I, I've got a little something called dignity. I went into the aroma room. Oh, okay. The aroma room, which is delightful, by the way, because it <laughs> s smells of eucalyptus. I went into the aroma room, which has a glass door. Oh, so you could see, but... And then I sat down in the aroma room and was staring... Waiting. Waiting for him to for get out. Because you can only last two or three minutes in the thing, and... Right before he came out of the cold tub, I came. So I just had. <laughs> I, I just I lost yeah. it. I was you know yeah. I was yeah. in my refractory period. I was like, good luck with the hog. Right. We don't need to get You're to the You're in bottom. the aroma room. It's all good. <laughs> no, no, I stood. I sat in the aroma room looking through the glass door, and I could kind of see. And then he got out, but there was like a pilaster or pylon or something, something Roman, you know, it was a Roman column or something like in between Blocking his cock. Like uh, I was looking at like one ass cheek and side cock, you know, and yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't make it out. I just, I, I don't know. <laughs> it was big when he went in. Um, that's all. That's, that's all. Good I, to know. All right. <laughs> that's, that's all I know. But that, that's what I know about dicks. I, I don't like the fact, I don't like the fact that there's so much variety you know what I mean? I wish it was a little more standard issue. Why? I, I just, you know, because I feel like everybody here has ears, right. but they're basically the same. Yeah, but you're you like know a, what I mean? You're into cars, though. You like the different models, the different speeds, the well, different Well, look, it's, it's all sour grapes. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> if I look like the guy who got into the cold tub, then I'd be I'd, happy I'd, with I'd, what you got. could be out right now. Yeah, I don't... I don't like that some guys get the super, you know, there's the veiny ones. The there's veiny the ones dicks. that look like Wolverine's neck. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? I don't like that. Then there's weird mushroom head dick. Mushroom head and dick. And then there's weird uh, Peronis, you know, dog leg, you know. How many dicks have you seen? A lot of dicks, right? 
you I've know, seen a lot more, of more than yeah. a, a care to share there's, there's with also you. The, there's also the ball to shaft ratio, which changes over time. Over get older. Uh-huh. When you're a young man, your balls are they're tight. They're, they're up in there, and the, yeah. dick, and the dick is long because it's always excited. Yeah. And then you hit 40, and they're equal. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. And now my balls are longer than my dick. It's like a sundial. You know no. how much time you have left on no. the planet. When your balls, when your balls touch the ground, you die. Yeah, Did no, you know that? True. I'm it's safe true. then. I'm good. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to live forever. It's like that movie Candyman. If you say it three times. Oh, no. Yeah. If your balls yeah. touch yes, the ground. Yeah. No, yeah. my dick and balls basically have a deal. They're, they're like... I'll race you to the grave. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what's happening. Yeah. And it's not good. And the other thing, just a tip. Oh. You, you got to trim it up. You got to trim it up. Because uh, yeah. I've, been, I've been thinking about this for a minute. The, the, the hair, when it gets a little overgrown down there, makes the penis look shorter. Yes, we know. My, my argument is when the grass is real high around the mailbox, it makes the mailbox post look shorter. It's yeah. Small, right. You've got to trim that grass around it's the like, mailbox. Yeah. It's like going yeah. through a present, it's just all tissue paper, tissue paper, you find a pencil. That's what it's like. Yes. For a girl. Yeah, yeah. Trim Other than that, up. I have no thoughts about dicks. All I wanted, all I really wanted out of a dick... All I wanted was a, enough that I could hang on to the base and somebody, there'd be enough left to work with. You know what I mean? You, that mean, I could, that, you mean that it breaks the plane of the top of your fist? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think we were discussing it on the podcast. If you could poke it through a toilet paper roll. Oh, how much is on the other side of it? Find a little daylight. Right. You know what I mean? Where it's, it's, it's a, well, I'd say it's a percentage, it's a, it's a, it's a percentage thing. Like if you. There's some guys that can't get it through. They're okay, so Those thick, are my yeah. heroes. Okay. Those <laughs> are the, the girth heroes. The girth guys. The yeah, girth, the girth guys, guys can't, can't get even it get through. it through. Yeah. Now, but if you could do a toilet paper roll and still have 20 to 30% of your hog on the out, on the yeah. happy side of the yeah. roll, you're doing good. If you could, if you do a. You do a paper, paper towel, towel roll, roll. You're, you're Ron Jeremy. Yeah, at the... right. I do, uh, I do wrapping paper. <laughs> oh, that roll? Yeah, That's... I mean, I'm just saying, it's wrapping that paper. that thin? Is it thin? Though? Yeah, yeah, it's very thin. Worst thin Christmas yeah. ever for the kids, huh? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, this wrapping paper looks used. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, what's the best thing to come out of a dick? What? Wrinkles. What's the best thing to come out of a dick? It's a joke. What's the best thing to come out of a joke? Wrinkles. Wrinkles. When it gets hard, the wrinkles. That's what you mean, right? (laughs) Wait, do I not get that joke? Because when the dick gets hard, then the wrinkles are gone. It's all smooth. Oh, a best thing to get out of a dick. Oh, I thought you meant to come out of a dick. All right. (laughs) Sir, Sir, write it on the the ball next time. Put the whole thing on the ball. Leave the comedy to the professionals on stage, (laughs) sir. Wrinkles. Yeah. All right, this let's do yours one now. more. Oh, okay. I didn't look at it. Oh, this is a nice uh, uh, little uh, piece of magic. Ass. Ass. Dick and ass. Ass. This is a clean crowd. I love it. I uh, ass is. It's a. We have a weird relationship with asses. You know. Yeah. I mean, we mm-hmm. love them. And we worship them, and we, we want to grab them, but also poop comes out of yeah. them. It's, yeah. That, that's just a weird. That's just a weird relationship. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's 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 a, it's weird to have a species that really worships the ass, but it's also the thing that produces the poop. The poop. And I don't think there are any other animals in the kingdom. <laughs> Maybe baboons. Who yeah. like worship the ass, mm-hmm. and they're also uh, also repelled by what comes out of it. 
You know what I mean? It'd be like, oh, I love my daughter, but every time she opens her mouth, I'm going to kill her. <laughs> I'm going to throw up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's yeah. weird. It's, right. a, it's a weird thing. Perhaps I shouldn't use my daughter as an <laughs> example on, on this one. But I am also interested in the guys who are ass men. Yeah. And we could get That sort of changed. Did you notice that it sort of just made a shift, I think, in the 90s? Into the big ass? Yeah, it used to be tits. It was all tits for a long time. So everybody worried about their tits. They spent a lot of money on their tits. These are real. Yeah, now they're getting ass implants. Now it's all ant. It's all ass. What are you guys? Uh, I'm I'm a tits. I'm not not ass. Ass, you got to have a big hog to be into the ass. That's just, that's... That's what it is. That's 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 why the the the, the ballers love the Kardashians. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You have to have a big unit in order to really maximize the ass. You can't maximize <laughs> the ass with a micro penis. Right. You can't right. do it. Yeah. No, you're not getting anywhere. There's nothing. With that. I, no. I don't. I, I couldn't pleasure the Kardashians. I couldn't pr- pleasure. I mean, you know, I could try. <laughs> I would like to. I'd give it a, you know, the old college try yeah. for sure. But, but no, I'm just saying that some of these women, like who's got like the big, you know, booty, like Huge. and they're getting ass implants and yeah. and what do they do? Do they inject it? And I also you like do. the people that try to save thirteen dollars on plastic surgery. Like, well, what happened to Anita? Oh, she died. She went to Tijuana to get ass surgery, and she went to a car upholstery place, and they just put. They put, uh, they put those packing peanuts in there, and then she flatlined because uh, they were doing the operation on a sidewalk, and <laughs> yeah. actually a pigeon actually infected her because it was walking by because a guy dropped a taco into her open wound. Like, it's like, do not go to Mexico to save a couple of nickels on, on ass surgery. No. Yeah. D- but what do you do? Jody, you haven't done You don't need any of that stuff. You're just as... Perfect, perfect as God made you, but right. what is the ass? What is the ass implants? So it's I mean, there's you can do injections if you don't want to actually do the implants, which is just really painful. Apparently, they just inject you with fillers to make it thick, and then like what happens is that like some of the fillers start leaving, so you have like a flat ass on one side and a full ass, so one cheek gets smaller than the other. Mm. So that's why a lot of women just do the implants. So it's like silicone implants. It's like what your boobs are in here. How many, all right, let's see if we can get a show of hands. How many yeah. here? How many people have an how ass many implant ass men here? Are, we got ass guys uh, yeah, where here. Yeah, are ass guys? This guy right here is like, and then she was like, put your fucking hand down. Put your fucking hand down. Well, <laughs> whatever you're into, your wife needs to possess it. Otherwise, she's yeah. going to be pissed, yes. right? So you should always have some porn queued up on your browser that's a that close your approximation wife. Right. to your wife, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if she finds busty Asians, and we're going to have a problem. Well, unless yeah. she's a busty Asian. Right. So you, yeah. you just type in, like, angry with crow's feet. Yeah. Whatever comes up. Small boobs yeah. after childbirth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, crow's feet, true. Saggy boobs <laughs> from childbirth. <laughs> that, from that's Breast, right. Breastfeeding. That's, that's, that's right. That's what that's, you're into. That, that's, that's what, what you you're want. into. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, do, so, like, Kim Kardashian has had ass implants? Yes, but they already had a bigger butt. The problem is, is that for women that, like, counted on their tits to be their thing, we saw all these women with the big asses, so we just started eating more and trying to flex it out, and now that's going to go away, and then we're just stuck with a fat fucking ass. <laughs> yeah. I don't, uh, I yeah. don't condone yeah. it. Fitzdog, ass, boobs, what do you like? Uh, I like a nice pair of feet. Oh, really? <laughs> Real or fake? Do you like the fake, fake feet? feet. Fake feet. Yeah, I like fake feet. <laughs> I don't get the feet. To me, the feet are just there to hold the tits up. <laughs> and the ass. It's like, I, it's like going to a museum There's... and staring at a pedestal instead of the actual sculpture right. on it. Do you there know what I mean? There are feet websites just for fucking feet fetish people. Well, think of it this way, Adam. How often do you walk down the street and see a nice pair of tits exposed? No. When no, springtime never. comes, I'm walking down the boardwalk, flip-flops everywhere. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Those are tits I'm looking at. <laughs> I, I envy you, my brother. Yeah. 
I say the same thing to my religious friends. I wish I believed, you know? Yeah. I wish I was into feet because then I'd just be on the boardwalk with you come yeah. summertime. Just yeah. get a boner hard to all the bitches everywhere. in the flip flops. <laughs> That's right. And you're right. The tits aren't out and yeah. I have to use my imagination. Yeah. So I wish I was into feet. I fuck it. I wish I was into elbows as long as we're talking. Right. I wish I was into eyelids. Right. I, I wish I was into anything. Yeah. But shit, I can't see. Then you'd be looking at her tits and she'd be like, my eyes are up here. Oh, no. You'd be looking at her eyes and she'd be like, my, my tits are down here. <laughs> yes. I flipped the joke. Otherwise, it would have fucking killed. <laughs> I got it. All right. One more. Let's do, uh, let's do one more ball. One more ball here. Hey, this looks like a long one. What does this say? I don't even... What does this say? You're, that says you're a, a strategy. Oh, strategy. I look like a you. Strategery. 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 It's like all the way around the entire box. Oh, strategery? Let's get another one. I don't even know what that <laughs> fucking means. Is that another boating? It's a boating I, thing. I'm taking a mulligan on that one. This one's got a picture on it. Gavin with an X. Oh... Gavin Newsom. With a little X. Oh, God. With a little X. Fitz dog, you're a Democrat, but can you defend Gavin Newsom? Like, my thing about Gavin Newsom to my uh, many, many friends on the left is, but you guys can't like him. I mean, I, I know he's in your party or you're in his party, but you can't think he's good at his job, can you? Or, can't, or do you? Um, I don't really follow California politics. And that's not a cop-out. I really don't. You, you I, follow yeah. Michigan politics more closely? <laughs> What's that? Michigan politics. Yeah, you Michigan gotta... politics I'm much more into. Um, no, I honestly, you know, he seems like, uh... uh I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I mean, like, here's what I will say about Gavin Newsom, and it's all, all, all I want, is he doesn't... No, I'm pissed off. He doesn't track properly. Like yeah. when I interviewed him for an hour, I was, he was like, oh, we got to shut down these predatory check cashing places that prey mainly uh, on black and Hispanic people. And I was like, why? What's wrong with them? He's like, nothing's wrong with them. And I was like, why'd you say black and Hispanic? He goes, they prey on everybody. I go, well, why'd you say black and Hispanic? Because they prey disproportionately on those people. And I go, okay, what's the problem? What, what, what can we do? How can we get them? They don't have access to checking accounts. By the way, at some point it sounds like you're talking about a retarded child. And it's something like, they don't have, they don't have what you and me have. They don't have access. Like, I, I love the speeches. I love when Biden is like, black entrepreneurs are just as good as white entrepreneurs. They just, they don't have lawyers or accountants that have access to those people. It's like, Hold on, this is a little insulting, I would say. They want them to produce an ID so they can vote? Come on. They're black and Hispanic. Come on. They're not capable of these things. We're white. We do things. They don't. They're black and Hispanic. So he's like fucking just telling me. Like, they're not going to. I'm like, okay, then what's the plan? What's the plan? And he's like, well, I, I, we could sit here and talk about it. I go, no, I want to know what the fucking plan is. It's check cashing places. They're predatory. They, they prey on black and Hispanics. Go. What's the plan? And he's like, hey, you could have said, oh, I'm going to have bilingual kiosks set up in, in neighborhoods, opportunity zones. He didn't say anything. We just argued for 40 minutes. He had no answer. His other answer, and it's, it's mind-numbing, I was complaining to him about traffic, about traffic. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Worst traffic in the world. Yeah. Hey, I saw a billboard I liked the other day. It said, uh, you're not in traffic. You are traffic. I kind of like that one. Like, what the fuck is that? I hope he doesn't become an oncologist. Hey, hey, State Street, I saw something I thought was kind of funny. You don't have cancer. You are cancer. All right, I'm going to take a break. Like, what the fuck kind of problem solving with this? And then the other greatest, Gavin Newsom's greatest hits. And by the way, they, they wanted me to talk about Gavin McLeod, the skipper from the love boat. Um, but That's I'm why sorry. there was an X on it. it that was... bald fuck. <laughs> He doesn't know what a sheep shank is from a terrabine or whatever the fuck that thing is. No. His other greatest hit is when somebody asked him. It's like people are leaving California. You know, California, we're number one for U-Haul prices. Like it's like, it's like five, five to ten times as much to take them that way than to get them back. And it's like, let's just have to hire people to bring U-Hauls back. But 
He tells this whole story. It's a, the person is interviewing him. It's like, everyone's leaving California. What, what's the deal? And he goes, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I'll tell you what I like to say. I like to say, where else are you going to go? And the, <laughs> and the person goes, uh, well, a lot of places. People go to Texas and Florida. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I know. I didn't say that. Jerry Brown said that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're just quoting some other politician. All right. And then he goes, where are you going to go? And he goes, hey, hey listen, listen. I, uh, I got some friends, affluent couple. They moved to Utah, and, uh, and they're loving it over there, and they're raising their kids there, and, uh, you know, they have money, and uh, they got good schools over there, so they're, they're over there in Utah. And the person's like, uh, yeah, 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 when, when are they coming? I, I imagine it might come back at some point. It's like, <laughs> you're being asked, what are you doing about people fleeing your state, and you cite a couple who fled your state, and is super happy in another state, and that was 10 years ago. He is fucking criminally insane. He does not track. He doesn't track. I wouldn't, there are plenty of guys I disagree with, right or left, but they track. He doesn't, he doesn't track. There's something wrong with him. If he was a jukebox, you'd kick him. <laughs> All right, let me give some plugs to these guys. You got me all fucking angry up in here. Fitz Dog's going to be in Chicago. Is that at the uh, Den Theater? Den Theater. That's coming up this Saturday as you hear this. And it's going to be at Atlanta at the Punchline, January 18th through the 20th as well. And uh, it's coming out to uh, La Jolla as well. La and Jolla. Portland. So yeah. Skinny Jody Miller. No ass filler. <laughs> Skinny Jody no Miller with no ass filler. She's got a special. It's going to be coming out. You should you should listen to my podcast. And we'll have her on. Yes, and definitely. you can also uh, check out Funny You Should Ask yes. as well, which is a fun show that I get to do from time to time. Yes. So until next time, it's Adam Carolla for Jody Miller and Fitz Dog. Say it, <laughs> Mahalo. Yeah.